Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, welcome to Good Owl Games and this is April's monthly roundup video. The one where I talk to you about the changes to my board game collection and some other things. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to yet another edition of my monthly roundup videos. Um, so for those of you uninitiated, this is the video where I talk about the new games I got over the month, some of the board games I've been playing. Usually there's a bit of kind of general chit chat, stuff about the channel, stuff about me right at the end of the video, but you don't have to watch that if you don't want to. I put time stamps throughout the whole thing here so you can hop about as you'd like, but obviously I'd love if you stay and preferably if you subscribe because apparently I'm close to a big round number. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that at the end, I suppose, um, rather than at the start, because um, normally I just jump right into the videos. But you may have noticed, maybe from here, somebody recognise this. Hang on, I'm going to stand up and you can see it. Look familiar to anybody? Boob shot. Um, yeah, it's the bird from the cover of Wingspan and it's on a t-shirt. And I would like to thank Matthew at Shirts and Merch for sending me this t-shirt. Not, they didn't sponsor the video or anything like that. They're just like, hi, we like you. We want to send you a t-shirt. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. So now I have a Wingspan themed t-shirt. Um, they also sent me another one as well, which said, don't worry, I've read the rules. And I laughed a lot at that because I don't normally do all the rule book reading around here. So it felt a bit disingenuous to wear that. Um, but yeah, there you have a small um, Etsy shop um, and you can go look them up and they have some very cool um, gaming related t-shirts. Um, I really like mine. It's really soft and it fits really good. I was a bit worried it wasn't going to, but it fits well. And I'm kind of a larger lady, so I don't normally get to have kind of nice, pretty, I don't know, t-shirts and stuff. So this was a real surprise because it all fits and it's lovely. So um, thank you, Matthew, for sending me this. Um, I'm going to enjoy it. And if you feel like you yourself might want to go and look at said t-shirts, I put the link in the bottom of the video. So yeah, that's not quite my shameless plug, but my thank you, um, because it was a really nice surprise just when I needed it. So yay, now I have board game themed t-shirts. Isn't that exciting? Um, so yeah, so we start with that. But there are other important purchases that have been um, lining up this month, and we're going to delve right into those. Um, so the first board game is... Ah, Cthulhu Wars. I'm glad I, I'm glad I had that right. Um, so yeah, let, let's discuss this because this is the game that should not be. Um, anybody who's been here for a while will recognize that I don't really do big miniature games. Maybe on occasion, but normally speaking, they're kind of things I avoid like the plague. And the notion of owning a game where the miniatures were like 10 foot tall um, didn't appeal to me either. Um, but this appeared in our local gaming store. Uh, my husband seemed kind of enamored with the idea of it. And I'm like, have you even watched a review yet? So sure enough, we sit down, we watch a review of Cthulhu Wars and they concur that it is a silly place. Um, where everybody is overpowered, stupid things happen, you stomp around with your monsters, but they agreed that it was really fun regardless. And I was like, this isn't a game for us. We've no one to play this with. We need humans to play area. Like it's an area control game on a map. Um, I'll explain more in a moment. Um, but that didn't stop my husband from deciding that this is a game he really, really wanted to own. So now we own Cthulhu Wars and I have played it twice. And let me tell you, it's an experience. <laughs> so Cthulhu Wars is a game where you play a Cthulhu Mythos faction. Um, there are four in the main box, but I heard there are 10 million more if you had money. And what happens is, is that you're trying to control parts of the map to gain energy. And when you gain enough energy, you win. So what really happens is that, so you are over there in a different country, you know, making energy. Someone else stomps over and going, I'm here to take your energy away now and fights ensue. Um, but what's interesting about this game um, is, the f is each faction is so crazy um, and completely different and they do very different things. And you unlock um, extra abilities as you play. You have a spell book and like they'll have little quests on them. And as soon as you complete the quest, 
you get access to this new ability and they're all silly um, and you have different um, kind of levels of monsters that you can make so there are acolytes you need those to man the gates so that you can gain energy um, and then everyone has like three kind of small to medium creatures and then everyone has their big lord um, so yeah if you're playing Cthulhu that's Cthulhu I can't pronounce the names of the other ones but they're there the yellow man I think the yellow something there was a goat as well um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, we played a two player first which I thought was also really stupid um, but you know what it's actually kind of fun it, it's fun because it's silly because there are just so many crazy abilities you spend most of the game asking yourself are you allowed to do that are you sure am I allowed to do this this seems a bit weird it's a bit busted um, but it, it actually was not terrible at two but it definitely wants more players and I'm getting very fortunate in that I'm getting groups of players around at least once a month now there'll be five of us so Cthulhu Wars only goes to four but I knew um, that my husband really wanted to see what it would be like with more people so I was like myself and my friend here we'll team up and we'll play one character and everyone else can play four and of course we won. Um, it was a very unusual game simply because no one really attacked each other. We all just stood around and that meant that myself and my friend won because no one else was doing anything. Did you ever get that in a game like that stalemate where no, there was no big aggressor, no one was even eager to kind of stop anybody else from winning? A little bit weird but it was still really fun um, because it's quite easy to pick up and easy to teach because there's not really a whole lot going on there you know it's like here are the different actions you can do here's how much they cost and then off you go and be your best self um, so Cthulhu Wars has been a bit of a surprise um, in the sense that it's not just stomping plastic around the map there is a bit of a game there but it's not much of a step up from stomping stuff around the map but I think, as my husband put it, he goes, if you know that this is just going to be silly going in, it's a different expectation than expecting a fully kind of fledged game where deep strategies and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's just fun to mess with other people's things. Um, I don't necessarily think he's wrong. It's beautifully produced. It would want to be for the price of it. It's probably the most expensive board game we've bought in forever. But my husband has just changed jobs and he was like, this is my present to myself. So I'm like, go for it. I will never stop you buying an expensive board game. And so now we own Cthulhu Wars. Man, isn't it? Like, that's the last game I thought we would ever have added to our collection. Um, so yeah, that was my experience with it. Rather fun. Um, yeah, shame it's so pricey. But rather fun. And there's a lot on the box. So um, that's that one, Cthulhu Wars. I'd love to hear what game you bought that you thought you never would. Because that's definitely like top of my list there. I can't I can't think of anything much higher up than, um, than that that I thought we would never get. So I want to hear about your um your purchases that you know you never thought you'd make. Okay, so let's move on to the second game. So as it turns out, this is really the month of games I thought I'd never see again, but have somehow crept their way back to me. And I think this is all yeah, this is entirely my husband's doing, so we'll have to blame him. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you about Imperium Legends. Um, as some of you maybe might remember, if you don't, I'll put a link to it. I reviewed Imperium Classics some time ago. And I sat down and I, I re-listened to my review, review of it at the time to see what I had thought. Because my, my memory of Imperium Classics is that this is an absolutely brilliant game with some big flaws um, that I thought it was it was super smart it was so close to being good but it wasn't all the way there but I couldn't stop myself from playing it regardless it was very very addictive and so the thing about Imperial Legends is that there's kind of two halves to it so one half with all these factions that were legends and the other one is um, factions that are I'm getting these wrong I'm gonna see that one is legends that's the new one What's the old one again? The Imperium Legends, Imperium... I'll fill it in down the bottom, right? And so there are basically just more factions for you to play with in the different style. Imperium Classics, there we go. Um, so Classics and Legends. And Legends has King Arthur in it. So I always joked, oh, I'd love to try and play the King Arthur deck. And what the game is about, it's a, I don't want to call it a deck builder, but it kind of is. You start with a deck of cards um, representing kind of a different civilization. And it has it within within it already made um, a thing it's trying 
trying to do, a way it's trying to win, um, with all of his cards kind of connected up together. And it's up to you to figure out basically how to optimize this deck, maybe add some cards into it to get some more victory points. Um, and there are, there's a whole bunch of things that happen to your deck. Every time you go through it, you get to add in a card from like maybe a special deck um, to give you more powerful things. You can go from being kind of uncivilized to civilized so that you can play different types of cards. But every faction is unique and that's the, that's the trick and in classics I always love playing the Vikings because you did loads of stuff with fire and unrest um, and every every deck is different so I can't really discuss it but it is really satisfying gameplay it's like drawing cards removing cards adding things in you know that kind of, kind of thing if you're into kind of deck building card games this is probably it and the problem is that it takes a long time to play the turns are like the downtime between turns is incredibly slow because there's so much stuff you can do it's a wholly uninteractive game for the most part um but i i liked it i like i, st I still do i still think this game is so good so my husband picked this up he was in like a, a bookshop i think it spotted it um to bring home and i was like oh no i thought this wasn't coming back into our house again but it does have king arthur in it and uh, so sure enough i've played it twice since uh since this is arrival and there's a whole host of new decks and things to learn um very much in the same vein as imperium classics still takes as long to play the downtime is still as big between the turns so i still have issues big time but there is that moment for the first like 60 percent of the game where it is so much fun um and then it all kind of gets bogged down as things get bigger the turns get longer that kind of thing that's always been my problem with this because i think it's such a good game oh my god it's so good and then there's just these kind of small niggly things holding it back um but i did have fun <laughs> this is the funny thing right we always end the game going oh that oh that was exhausting that wasn't worth it and then we're like do you want to play again i'm like oh okay <laughs> so pretty legends is like i don't know a toxic relationship for me um where i love it and i hate it but i can't stop going back for more something like that so it's weird now that i got the second half of it um so we'll have to see what i decide to do with it is the thing um but yeah it's still it's still fun it's still entertaining and it's still so damn clever um despite you know its downfalls so yeah that's imperium legends slash classics because it kind of they're getting thrown in together um here Right, so next on the list, um, this is a game I just got at the weekend, and um, this is one that's been in my sh shop, in my shop for a while, in my board game shop for a bit, and I have had some serious debates with myself whether this was the wrong or right choice to make um, for for purchasing, and this is Carnegie and the, the the reason i had a problem with carnegie is it was coming from the publisher quind games and quind games has done a host of kind of very interesting looking euro games but it really let me down with the last one or two releases so much so that i said i wasn't going to to buy another quind game um especially la stanza that's a, one of the few games that i didn't even finish the first game of i thought it was it was so awful um and so when this came out and there was a lot of talk about it and there was, you know, art by Ian O'Toole, I was like, but it still says Quint Games on the box. So I didn't know whether to believe it or not. And so I've left it on the shelf for quite some time. But the longer I've left it sit there, um, the more kind of pictures and discussion I've seen about it pop up on online. Um, and it seems to be that people were still enjoying it. Like, because um, it's not, it didn't come out like today or yesterday. Um, I suppose not that old, but still, uh, normally when something comes out, you know, you see loads of people playing it. Um, I didn't see loads of people playing it, but there are people out there. So I was like, maybe it's worth a punt. Um, and so I bought Carnegie and man, oh man, am I really glad I did. Um, I'd like to point out my version says it's from Pegasus Spieler, so I didn't buy a Quind game. Um, but this is really, really fun. I'm hoping I can describe the fun because I've only, I've only just played it. Um, and basically what it is, is that you're running a, a factory, essentially, and you're trying to do good works and put um, your workers kind of in the right places. Um, 
So there's basically there's two parts of it. Your board is a factory and it's all these little squares and there are, you put your meeples in different rooms that have different actions. And so if you want to activate the action in one of the rooms, you have to have a meeple there. And how the actions work is what's really clever. There is this little slider board and you get to decide um, basically which action is going to happen when. And that, <laughs> so you want to make sure you have the meeples in the right place. So one of those actions is you can move around your meeples. Some of those actions are you can put your meeples out in places so you can get money back. Some of them are allowing you to build cities on the map. It's kind of a map of America you can build cities on. Um, some of them allow you to basically do kind of philanthropic work, um, which is kind of end game scoring. So you kind of go and claim that for yourself. Um, the coolest part about your game board is that there is like a slot at the end where you have a piece of board that slides in and out and on it it reveals more things as you kind of take discs off of it so as you kind of upgrade it there are more things underneath to give you more bonuses and you pull it out and I really like that um, the design of it is it's really fun actually and the and it was quite interactive because of this action board because on my turn I would get to choose the actions and then your turn you would get to choose the actions so you'd be like does he want me to do this this turn am I helping him now or is he going to do this next and I'll prepare for when he does that um it was such a simple thing um but really really genius um and it was just really fun I had a really good time with it um I'm looking forward to playing it again um already so yeah two thumbs up for Carnegie so yeah the usual kind of euro gamey funness um but yeah it's it's nice and it's a good looking game which is not surprising you know Ian O'Toole and all that more Irish people doing great things yeah <laughs> so that is Carnegie okay have I anything left on the agenda I think I do I think I have Yes, I have I have two expansions. I'm very quickly going to run through one of them, which is Tapestry Fantasies and Futures before I forget the name because I've literally literally just bought it. I've not played it. I can't tell you anything about it yet. Um but I like we like Tapestry, I suppose. I like Tapestry. Um this wouldn't be my first expansion. This expansion came in an envelope, which I thought was rather interesting. And it looks like there are new player boards and new player cards, that kind of stuff. Just more expansion stuff with new things yeah yeah it looks just like that so added that into the tapestry pile I'll report back later if it did anything particularly spectacular um the other expansion I got is furnace interbellum um furnace is one of my favorite bidding games it's a very small little box and in it you are industrialists I see a trend here people I do love a good industrialist apparently and what you're basically doing is build, building an engine and you're bidding on cards each round to add to your engine. Then you activate it all in whatever order you want so that it will make you victory points or items or things like that um, is the best way I can describe it. The bidding mechanism is very clever because everyone can bid from four down to one individually. And if you win, you get to win the card. If you don't win, there's like a little bonuses on the top of each card and you'll get those instead so you never really lose even if you don't win which is awesome and playing a two player there is a dummy player who kind of just puts discs out you know in the center to interfere with your bidding and actually I quite like that as well um, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because of the expansion so the I had a go with this last night the expansion adds in a fifth player always a bonus um, it adds in kind of like personalities for the Automa player for playing with two players not sure how I feel about that it kind of gave them some extra rules and stuff I'm just like mm, did it need more rules it was it was perfectly annoying as it was maybe I'll like it better the more I play with it you also got an extra dial with which you could bid with you could spend coal to bid with um, which was also odd those extra bits and then there was two extra cards kind of added to the bottom of the row um, that you could bid on those and they had like um, little pieces of cardboard with um, different phrases on them that you could attach to your own cards so they'd have little rules that you could attach to your own cards if you won those um, it seems like there's a lot in this expansion because I haven't even got to the fact that there are new starter cards there are new um, kind of industrialists you can play as there are new kind of factories that go in the deck 
Um, so yeah, there's lots, lots in it. Some of the wording is very questionable. Um, not gonna lie, um, some of it was very hard to figure out. Um, but so far, so interesting. It's done some, inter yeah, it's done some new things with the old concept, which is good. It's possible maybe it's gone too far. It's also possible that I'm playing with all of the things together and you don't have to. It says in the rule book you can play with bits you like, bits you don't like. I think we literally just threw it all in together just to get a feel for what it was. But I do feel like there's a lot of value for money here for an expansion. I'm like, wow, this feels like there, there's a lot going on. And definitely some of it is stuff I'd want to keep and play with in future. Um, so yeah, so that's fur Furnace Interbellum. I don't think that's the right word, is it? Interbellum. Interbellum. Yes, it is interbellum. So that is all of the board games I've bought this month. <laughs> all, well, all of the ones that are currently here. So we'll go with that. They'll have to jump into next month. So um, tell me about what you have picked up over the past month, if anything, or more importantly, if you haven't, is there something you're saving for or you've got your eye on or you're waiting to come on sale? Like what's the game you're holding, you're holding your hope for? Um, that's always cool. You know, the one you, you have your eye on, you're like, oh, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I want to hear about the maybe decisions. Um, right. So. I'll pop over to the bit where I tell you about what I've been playing. There's probably not going to be too much in that because it was mostly in the first section, but sure, we'll give it a go. So there was one very big game that I got last month that I didn't get to talk about because I hadn't played it yet, but you'll be glad to know I am here to report on Frosthaven. Um, so for those of you on in the know, um, Frosthaven is kind of a newer version of a very popular title called Gloomhaven which comes in a very big box because it's got a lot of stuff. And in it, you and your friends, should you so desire, um, will go on an, ad on an adventure. And there will be dungeons for you to traverse, places to go, decisions to make. There's like a big book, there's a journal, there's a map. Um, and basically you're having adventures and not quite solving crimes, but you know, making the world a better place, making decisions, that kind of stuff. And then hopefully, you know, defeating the big bad or whatever, um, depending on what path you chose. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of Gloomhaven in a box. So Frosthaven seems to be um, what I, well, I hope it will be incredibly similar, except in the frost. Um, so now things are kind of blue and, and cold and that's cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, it's the game. It's the kind of game where there's definitely like a big story, um, but I'm not a big story person. Um, and so most of it is a uh, read through the story as quickly as possible, get to like the dungeony bit. And so at the start of the game, you're going to choose a character that you're going to play as. Um, I chose the one with the ghost symbol. I think it's Shadow Walker, it's called um, and whatnot. And you have your own deck of abilities that you're going to use. And the fun part is you put down two cards each turn to play. You use the top half of one, the bottom half of another. Um, and managing your cards is really important because you only have so many and every time you need to get them back you're going to lose cards. So you want to get the, it puts a timer on you know what you can be doing in the, the dungeon and also some of your cards just have one use only and so you have even less cards to play with. So it's that kind of pressure. Um, so the first adventure or so has been pretty fun. The first one's very introductory. You don't play with your whole hand of cards which makes sense and then we got into something slightly less introductory and trying to make sense of all my characters abilities and things like that but yeah it's very much still uh, Gloomhaven and it gives that kind of excitement to it um, like there was a point when I played Gloomhaven we used to play every Sunday um, and there's just a bit of glee about seeing the big box and all the tiles and things out it's nice that there are or some organizers and things in Frosthaven to help make your life a little easier. There's a whole bunch of stuff kind of going on. Like it's it's kind of a keeping track of everything is really its own job. Um, a little like a, a GM in a role playing game. Someone has to be in charge of all the bits and bobs. Um, but yeah, still really, really fun. I'm dying to see where it leads because I've pl played a lot of Gloomhaven. We finished Gloomhaven. So hopefully we'll get there with Frosthaven, maybe over time. But yeah, it's got good feels, good vibes, nothing drastically different, just kind of more good stuff, which I think is what you kind of want from your board games sometimes, right? More good stuff. Right. Okay, so that's Frosthaven. 
Um, the other game I'm going to talk about, uh, um, mostly because it has a fun story with it, is Cartographers from Thunderworks Games. And I talk about Cartographers relatively often because I think it's kind of a, it's a unique game. Um, I think it's one that will appeal to a lot of people. And it's also one that I find is incredibly fun. And Cartographers is a game about creating a map and how this works is that there is a deck of cards and you flip them over and they'll have different Tetris shapes that you need to fit into your paper grid um, and there will be objectives for putting you know the right colored pieces together or separate or whatever it is they have, they have different rules and you're trying to make all of this fit into your lovely map um, it's one of the few games if the only game I have that allows coloring um, so I love taking out my crayons and my markers and coloring in my map as you go along because everything's color coded and it's one of those things I think that's such a crowd pleaser because most people when they expect to play a board game they expect to play something with kind of like a lot of rules there's going to be a lot of learning you're going to have to pay a lot of attention and that's just not um that just does, doesn't work for everybody um and i think cartographers really bridges that gap of there's just enough rules to make it you know m m like interesting um but enough fun to keep it light and so recently when we had people around to to play games um i were actually around to watch a movie but we ended up playing games while we were waiting for food and i was like we should play cartographers so i took out my big box of colors and everything and it went down a treat um and i'm not surprised i like I just think it's so easy and fun, but also a real game. And I'm like, that's that's the best part of this. And it was nice to see one of the new players actually won. You know, she did better than the rest of us. And I sold a copy of the game at the end of the evening. <laughs> I have a tendency to do it with photographers. Um, it just kind of sells itself. You know, everyone wants to be able to do that and have fun um, and enjoy themselves. And it's just so small and tidy and it, it relatively inexpensive. So um, I think Cartographers is just such a great, not quite non-gamer game, it's close, um, but it has, you know, it's just got an, an appeal to it, a ge yeah, general appeal, and it's very approachable, so I've got to love a bit of that. Um, okay, so I'll go with the final game I'll discuss, and I'm debating now. I'll stick with the, I'll stick with my original thought. Um, so this is one of my favourite games, I talk about it. I'd like to say often, um, and this is Key Flower, and I, I love. I have such a soft spot for Key Flower. I'm still not entirely sure why. I think it's just because it's very clever. Um, and Key Flower is a game about building a village. Um, you have kind of settlers coming to your village. And what it really is about is coloured meeples. <laughs> so you have a whole host of coloured meeples and you use them for bidding on tiles to add to your village, but you also use them for activating the tiles in your village or your opponent's village. Um, and if you use meeples to activate things and someone buys the tile, they get the meeples. Ooh. And if you use meeples on other people's tiles to activate their abilities for yourself, they get your meeples. Um, and so there are like four colours of meeples and you're trying to kind of keep colouring them together to use all these abilities. Um, the fun part about building Keyflower is the abilities on the tiles um, and they, all of these tiles are upgradable as well to more, I don't know, victory points or things like that. Um, but mostly it's just like making different items, using the items to do other things. It feels very free flowing and it's kind of mean in a nice way because it feels almost accidental. It's like, well, I, I really need this thing and you're the only one who has it. So I'm not really targeting you. you. I just, I need this particular thing. Um, and so Keyflower to me is always really mellow and really fun um, at the same time, trying to fit everything into your village and using all of your abilities together to get you victory points. It does some really smart stuff as well, like giving you your end game scoring tiles at the very start of the game so that you can decide whether or not you want to place them out um, um, for bidding kind of at the end. Because you, you, bid, you bid on, you know, what's going to give you victory points in the last round. You're like, I would like this. I will use this many meeples um, to do so. 
But yeah, it's just so fun and easy going. Um, we like to play it with the expansions as well. I have two expansions. I have the Merchants expansions and I have the Farmers. I think the Farmers is the more fun because you get little animals and you put them in little pens and then they're worth points. It's great. Um, but yeah, it's something about Key Flower. It's just chill, fun and wholeheartedly Euro game. Um, yeah, it's just one of my favourites. So it was really nice to just take it out. Um, and be like, I'm not going to play a new game today. I'm like, we're just going to play something fun and awesome. And it's Key Flower. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, <laughs> that's why it was nice um, to take it out. Because it doesn't get taken out very often. But it's fantastic stuff. So what is your go-to game? Your What's your one favourite game? If you could play it every day, you would. I think mine might be Key Flower. Although I'm pretty sure I would get fed up with it eventually. I like to hop around the games, but I do love Key Flower a lot. So I want to hear what, yeah, what, which one would be yours, your go-to game? Right, so let's pop on to the final bit. I'll see if I actually have anything to say or not. So for the first and most amazing news in my life right now is the fact that I am watching a barn owl live on YouTube sit on her eggs. <gasps> it's adorable. I'll put a link to the thing below. I, I find it incredibly um, relaxing. I just leave the owl on, you know, in the background and she just huffs and puffs around her eggs and stuff like that. Um, so I'm hopeful that there will be baby owls soon. Yes, the irony of me watching owls. Um, but there you go, I can't, kind of can't help myself. It's an owl that's in Cork um, here in Ireland and you can tune in and watch and just see, see an owl live. Um, I think it's amazing. <laughs> I was so excited when I found it. Um, so yeah, that's definitely um, super excitement. In other news, um, so yeah, the channel is still trudging along here. Mm -hmm. um, I've recorded another video today. Any idea what it's for? Because I've left it in the background. <laughs> uh, so there will be two new reviews winging their way to you soon. Um, just got to put the intro stuff together for that. So that's exciting. Um, and there have been a whole number of new games I really should. I might actually put to vote once I finish with the review copies and see what you guys want to hear more about. I think that makes sense, doesn't it, to do the vote? Do you do the voting thing on YouTube? Does, does anybody pay attention to that? I'm not sure. I don't know if I used YouTube enough for that, but um, let me know if you would, if you if you see those kind of things that come up um, on YouTube where you can vote or whatever it is. And if so, we'll, we'll test it out and see what happens. Um, another exciting news, I'm almost to a big round number for the channel subscribers. Um, don't know how to feel about that because I'm trying very, very hard not to feel about numbers. Um, because I think it's to the detriment of uh, my soul possibly in the internet if I were to keep focusing on numbers a lot. Um, I'm not the kind of person who's very good at promoting themselves. So I feel like I'm just going to do a good job and put it out there and do my best maybe to promote it a, a little bit and see kind of what happens. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like if you're doing good things, it'll be found. But that's probably not how the Internet works at all. Um, but I think if I was to chase numbers, it would make this more stressful than it already is. And that seems kind of unnecessary to me. So <laughs> kind of keep trudging along with that. But it would be nice to reach that big round number. So we'll keep our eyes peeled and see what happens. Who knows? So what's been happening with me? Um, probably not a lot of exciting things. There's been birds because, you know, birds um there's a bird sanctuary near me that i like to get to on the weekend and see what i can see um so that's pretty cool um i think i mentioned that last month too but you know it's still pretty cool um do my best to get out and explore a bit more because the weather is slightly improving so i was at the old head of kinsale last weekend let's see if i have a picture too ready of that i have now a backlog of photos to get to and edit uh, of course um which seems it seems kind of typical um still been going to the cinema and things like that um there's been a couple of unusual things in my cinema has a bunch of like old movies in which is kind of exciting and how dare i call like lord of the rings an old movie um but apparently it is so there's like lord of the rings there's pulp fiction i think i'm going to go see alien and aliens um as a double feature um so that should be awesome i hope my bladder will hold up um, yeah, this is kind of a list of things I'm doing to try and keep myself um, okay um, as best I can. It's been a quiet kind of month and this month kind of disappeared really, really quickly. And I'm mostly just incredibly tired and trudging along with things. So I'm probably going to keep this short today so that I don't end up waffling and can maybe hope the next month's a little bit better um, in those phase. 
but yeah so that's kind of everything yeah i'm just gonna keep it short and sweet i don't have to, uh, i don't have to do this <laughs> No, I like doing this. I like doing this. I just, I like doing this when I feel a bit better. So you'll have to hold hope with that. Um, so do tell me about your games, what you've been doing. Um, I love hearing your news. I love news. Tell me anything. Um, what's good in your life at the moment? What are you excited about? Definitely want to hear that. Could do with a bit of a, a pick me up. That'd be fun. All right, everybody. So um, I will talk to you again soon. Enjoy the month and keep an eye out for the next video or two. Um, all right. Talk to you then. Bye bye.